Hey people, you're back with Bunky and his builds. We're going to look over my uh, soldiers now. I'm going to start off with my favourite, the human soldier. I do a love adrenaline rush. Um, spec it this way, okay guys? Go with damage, melee damage and shield boost. Okay, Shield boost is going to give you 100% uh, of your base shields back every time you activate the power. That's 500 shields, okay? So uh, you can really survive any pinch situation. It's like an infinite uh, weak... Ops pack, okay guys, it really will help you survive any um, sort of situation, but most importantly, this is going to uh, instantly reload the clip of whatever weapon you're using, um, unless it's charged, of course. Um, if anything, it's just going to start the charging process if you hit a uh, adrenaline rush with one of those on. But um, no, the, the point is, you can take one of those really high power one hit weapons, uh, or you know, even those high power small clip weapons, okay, and as soon as you're done with the clip, you hit adrenaline rush and they're really loaded with no animation whatsoever and you're back in uh, full fighting force in fact greater fighting force as you can see there's a 70 percent uh, weapon damage increase when you do that uh, that's why you want the melee damage for the fifth rank okay guys because that's going to knock down the duration because all this magic happens upon activation and that's what you want to be able to do as frequently as possible uh, i skip concussive shot to take frag grenades for my crowd control okay i expect them for damage bleed damage and shield overload okay this is really going to help me Deal with a large fruit, uh, room of mooks, okay, if a situation gets crowded. I just throw out one of these, okay, guys. There's a nice 6.5 meter radius, uh, so you really don't need to increase that any larger. And um, you really don't, uh, and if you spec for damage and the bleed damage, okay, guys, you're going to kill them, okay. They, if they don't die instantly, they're going to bleed to death. And, you know, you've got the shield overload there to just go through any of their shielding and stuff like that. So, yeah, great mook killer with your frag grenade, and then you've got adrenaline rush to just uh, wreck everything else. Uh, alliance training, if you really want to support what you're doing with Adrenaline Rush, go with weapon damage, headshots and weapon damage. And then you want all health and shields for his fitness, okay? Durability, shield recharge and fitness expert. It gives you 825 health and shields because humans are ever so squishy. But like I said, Adrenaline Rush is going to give you 500 shields upon activation, okay? So uh, that's really nice survivability with this guy little agile weapons platform and we will be slapping on the claymore okay the claymore is what i recommend for this guy it's uh, just a beastly uh, one hit weapon okay um so you know it's it's exactly what i was advertising earlier this is what you want to be doing you just uh take one of these kind of weapons and adrenaline rush them uh put on the smart choke and the high velocity barrel uh that's basically your best combination for the vast majority of shotguns okay guys it's a non-dlc weapon so the added weight won't be there okay you will not be getting that added weight and basically you'll just be able to shoot once with a claymore adrenaline rush and shoot again with a claymore okay at almost twice the power Really great burst damage. Now for the equipment. Um, get the armor piercing rounds on for the extra armor damage. So you can really wreck up those bosses. Uh, go with a high cyclonic modulator. Okay, I can't show you any. But that's what you want, okay? Because you are squishy. And uh, for your gear bonus, go with the Shock Trooper upgrade. Okay, the Shock Trooper upgrade's got everything you want. Um, it's got the shotgun damage and the extra grenades, okay? So everything that makes you versatile in one little package there. And of course, you want a shotgun rail amp. Okay, and that's the human soldier. Now, um, here's an alternative build with my female human soldier. And uh, this is basically um, another great use for Adrenaline Rush, okay? Uh, the build's very much the same thing, only slightly different, okay? Adrenaline Rush is exactly the same. You want damage, melee damage, and shield boost. Um, frag grenades, first difference, okay? Go with damage, bleed damage, and then go with armor piercing. Okay, because what I'm going to be using on uh, this character is the striker. And now, the striker is amazing at killing the mooks, but pretty crappy at killing um, the bosses. So the armor piercing is really going to help out with that. Because uh, basically the striker is a um, explosive rounds uh, ramp up weapon. Okay, So it's really all about its air of effect damage. Therefore, great at killing um, trash mobs. Um, but it, when you're trying to sort of uh, take on one singular target, you're really not getting the full damage out of every shot. So it's really nice to be able to just uh, empty a clip with the uh, striker. 
and then I can reload cancel with a frag grenade, okay, and do some really nice damage then to help me take down those bosses. Um, I can just gun down the books on my own with that gun, okay. Now for the alliance uh, training, I want weapon damage and power damage, okay. The headshots are no good. Headshots do not work on guns with explosive rounds, okay, or at least with their rounds have explosive properties. So take the power damage then, ramp up your grenades a bit to help you with the bosses, and then you can take some more weapon damage. Uh, fitness again. Durability, Shield Recharge, Fitness Expert. Now, as I mentioned, okay, not so subtly as I'm going to be slapping the, uh, sorry, the Striker Assault Rifle on this thing uh, with its, uh, you know, projectiles and then explosive properties and all stuff. It's not going to pierce, okay? But, um... You do want a magazine upgrade on all your ramp up weapons, so firstly and foremost, and then you just want the extended barrel, because like I was just about to say, you can't pierce with these type of guns. Now, um, this is why uh, another great use for Adrenaline Rush, simply because it's a ramp up weapon, okay, that you have to fire off a few rounds before these guns start firing at full power. So that's what you do, you start getting it going, it starts bouncing off and doing some really nice damage, you start wrecking the enemy, and just before that clip empties, you hit Adrenaline Rush, and then it's full again, okay, and then you're firing a whole new clip with increased damage, uh, but at full rate of fire, right from the get go, okay guys, and that's how you just churn out a lot of damage with a great ramp up weapon, okay, that's another great use for Adrenaline Rush, you just keep ramp up weapons going forever okay uh, you can even um, you can even get a third round uh, with the thermal clip pack okay you just eat one of them that increases doubles your damage again okay guys so and then you just got a third clip of uh, full power and full rate of fire it's a really cool way to just uh, drill at the enemy now, the equipment in this situation, okay, guys, I'm going to recommend um, either incendiary rounds, okay, because they do some nice damage. Uh, you've got some dot uh, behind everything you're doing then, and obviously when I'm throwing in the frag grenades against the bosses, I get fire explosions. But other than that, I recommend warp rounds, okay? Warp rounds are going to weaken armor and do additional damage to armor and barriers as well as, plus it's just general good damage overall. Warp rounds are great uh, for projectile weapons. Uh, for the armor bonus, okay, um... Because we're going to be basically just locking down the enemies with uh, quick um, explosive rounds, okay, they're just going to be locked down, they're going to be bombarded by it, uh, they're going to be surviving off that, and you're going to be uh, using that opportunity to go for the stabilization module so you can control the striker efficiently and lock, just lock down all those trash bombs, because it will be those uh, long-range characters or enemies, rather, that will cause you any trouble with this build. Uh, switching up the shock trooper upgrade, then, for the warfighter package... Okay, so you've got the assault rifle damage and the extra grenades. And then, of course, you want the assault rifle rail amp then. Okay, and that's my two fun ways to play with Adrenaline Rush. Moving on, moving on. Uh, now the Krogan Soldier, this bad boy. Uh, this is a melee build, okay? A lot of fun, still very effective. Uh, fortification, okay, get the durability. Now, I know what you're thinking, why wouldn't I take melee damage if I'm going to do a melee build? Well, the way the, this uh, that evolution works is, um, well, the way the, the melee damage bonus works in general with fortification, what you have to do is you need to turn fortification on, then turn fortification off to get the melee damage bonus uh, in action. Uh, it's a nice... It is really nice uh, increase, but it's that that whole process is just kind of cumbersome and unnecessary. I find you're better off just going for the damage reduction, so you've got a thirty percent damage reduction, so your character's really tanky, so he can just be in close and melleeing everything, and then finally take the power synergy. Okay, this is going to uh, amp up everything else that we're doing. Now, uh, carnage is going to be your bread and butter. Okay, uh, expect carnage like this. You want to go with uh, damage. Definitely want recharge speed, so you can just get these out really quickly and efficiently, so you just can knock back every enemy you see. If you take incapacitate, you're going to knock them to the ground, and then that's going to throw off your, uh, your Krogan charge, okay? You don't want to be doing that. Just stick with the recharge speed, so you can do it quick and efficiently, and then finally take the armor damage. This is going to be really important for when you're dealing with bosses. But uh, what, I, what I mean by your bread and butter is that, um, you know, the uh, Krogan charge can be thrown off quite easily, okay? The slightest uh, um, movement from the enemy, or, you know, you just... Uh, approaching at the slightly the wrong angle you'll just sort of skim across the enemy if you hit them with carnage first you will stagger them and lock them into a position where you can just like literally home in on them with your krogan charge and get them every single time so it's carnage heavy melee carnage heavy melee but when the bosses come around and it's not too cl uh, clever to go in and melee them okay this is when you're rocking inferno grenades and carnage okay and with the power synergy from fortification this combination gets very very damaging to armor all right uh, expect these for damage 
damage and armor damage okay you are burning away armor immensely with that combination okay but uh, especially with the power synergy backing up you know those um those evolutions okay then you can throw in carnage okay now carnage has got the armor uh, bonus evolution as well so you know you're already just a melting armor with the inferno grenade then you fly then the carnage flies in and hits it hits armor um really hard again but then that also sets off a tidy fire explosion because both ranks uh, both powers are now at rank six so that's going to be the strongest fire explosions available in the game okay and then you're just going to do some super super damage there to your boss targets um for the krogan berserker just go three ranks into it for increasing your capacity there and your power damage and your weapon damage all good general stuff and then for your rage mode okay take durability for your first evolution so you've got the extra shields and damage uh, protection while in rage mode okay and uh, then you take martial artist and pure rage okay so this basically means once you've uh, killed two enemies with a melee uh, attack you go into rage mode rage mode is going to give you an, an additional 25% damage reduction so now a nice and tanky when we're up close punching everything or headbutt in, in the Krogan's way really and then we've also got a 50% increase to our melee damage which is uh, supported by the martial artist uh, evolution okay guys which is going to increase our melee damage by 75% once we kill an enemy with a heavy melee okay so we're just doing a lot of melee damage we're really tough okay we're hard to kill and we're just versatile we're able to deal with everything it's a great little melee build okay now the weapon I got on him is the Piranha Shotgun. Any shotgun's a really good idea for your melee characters, okay? Because um, first and foremost, stick on the high caliber barrel, okay? So you're doing some of that extra damage. And but basically, with a shotgun, you're all um, sorry with a melee build, you're always going to be at close range, which is going to really benefit. So then, basically, the shotgun uh, damage bonus that you get from being up close is just always going to be in play. And then you're also uh, shotguns have uh, the uh, shotgun Omni Blade, which is the uh, mod that gives the highest uh, melee damage. bonus bonuses okay so th that just really complements itself really nicely and the fact that you can just sort of uh, bounce this thing off your hip and uh, drill the boss targets okay so when you when it's not clever to go in and punch them you can just pull back inferno grenade um, uh, and carnage and just drill into them until you're able to just do the same thing again and okay you just wreck the bosses that way uh, for the equipment, okay, I just recommend getting on the armor piercing rounds, okay, so you're doing the extra damage, although you can go with incendiary and uh, have the incendiary rounds actually swallow up the damage from the inferno uh, grenades, okay, and you can churn out that, uh, that, all that damage that you do in uh, eight seconds and churn it out in three, okay, so uh, that's part of the incendiary glitch that you can take advantage of if you feel the need. Um, for the armor bonus, get on a cyclonic modulator so you can tank it, guys. Um, the gear bonus, get on the juggernaut shields, okay, with the juggernaut shields you've got the melee damage and the extra shield chance so really really hard to take down okay you can really tank very efficiently with this character and this build and then for the weapon bonus okay go with the strength enhancer okay because it is a melee build so you've got the melee damage there and that's how we croak moving on um the turian soldier okay the turian soldier is the turret of the game <laughs> uh, because of his uh, passives and um, his abilities, he just is the best character in the game for making shit guns great. And I love to take full advantage of that, okay? That's why I love to pick up this character and do. Um, to get all those abilities going, though, this is how you build him, okay? Marksman go with the uh, firing rate, then go with the headshots, and then go with the accuracy and firing rate, okay? So basically, you're just going to be streaming out bullets uh, on whatever gun you slap on this guy, and you've also got the accuracy increase there, so the spread isn't that far. So you really are just, uh, you've got some really nice accuracy uh, while you're streaming out these bullets. So you're just, uh, just doing a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. Um, the headshots uh, bonuses, well, I believe uh, that's one of the few headshot bonuses that actually uh, multiplies um, with the you know, with the general headshot bonus that's in the game. Okay, so you get a really uh, tidy uh, headshot bonus with that. But uh, most importantly, that lowers the duration of uh, Marksman, which um, because they've given Marksman the ability to reload your gun just like uh, Adrenaline Rush does, it's just a, a great way to just 
really stand your ground and just churn out damage with this guy, okay? Because you never need to worry about the manual uh, reloading animations, okay, guys? You can just shoot marksmen, keep shooting, okay? Just stream it all out, really great damage. I don't bother with a concussive shot, okay? Because as long as marksman's in play, you're not going to be able to use any powers. Uh, proximity mine's probably one of the few you're actually going to get to use. Uh, you can uh, obviously throw out a proximity mine before you use marksman to weaken a boss, and so you can just gun it down really quickly, okay? Go with the radius. So you just don't miss your target. A damage taken. This is the whole point in taking proximity mine. You want that evolution every single time. And then I go with the recharge speed then so I can get into marksman nice and quick afterwards. The Turian veteran, uh, veteran, sorry, you really want to get all your weapon bonuses, okay guys? So damage and stability. Headshots and damage and stability. And yes, that's right, damage and stability, okay guys? Not only do you get that wicked 37.5% increase to your weapon damage, okay? You also get a nice 55% weapon stability. So all those guns are sort of kick and bounce and jump all over the place. It's really hard to aim the Turians, uh, the Turians, uh, just sort that out for you, okay, they're really easy to handle, you just got to, it's like, they make them like every other gun, okay, you just point in the direction you want to go, and that's exactly where you're going to shoot, okay, because there's not going to be any kicking it going on when you're using this character, and that's what makes him the turret, okay, guys, he's just able to stream out bullets so accurately that he does a ton of damage with just about anything you give him. Um, because he's quite a stiff character, though, you want all fitness, okay, go with durability, shield recharge, and fitness expert. You've got some nice shields and uh, decent health, okay, okay health, decent shields. So he, you know, he can really stand his ground, and it's all about just um, killing before you're killed, okay, and it's something you can absolutely do with a marksman ability. Now, like I said before, I like to have fun uh, with this guy because he just makes all the shit weapons great, so I like to stick something on him like the eagle here, okay, the eagle um, does some really nice damage uh, per shot, but it's um, you know its rate of fire isn't all that, and but it kicks like a mother, okay. But on the Turian soldier, forget about it. It's not uh, it doesn't happen, okay, guys. I've got I got uh, pinpoint accuracy, and I'm able to just stream out of that really nice damage really quickly with this gun, and essentially make a poor man's harrier out of the eagle. It's uh, it's really quite satisfying. Uh, when you're using marksman, you always want to get your ammo up. So uh, take the magazine upgrade, and uh, then I take the heavy barrel for the full percent damage increase and then I take on the uh, Adus anti-synthetic rifle okay because like you're a really stiff character and by that I mean you have no evasive ability so when you've got something rushing you down like a phantom something nasty like that you can switch to the Adus and that with the marksman is basically just going to lock her down this thing staggers all true precise enemies uh, with every shot and the fact that you can just stream out the shots now with marksman okay you can just lock down a phantom if she gets too close and uh, you know that's no longer an issue okay so now I'm able to just deal with anything the game throws at me um, again, want well, the magazine upgrade on it. Um, it. It's a projectile weapon. That's why it's so good at staggering. Okay, so it doesn't pierce. Just take the extended barrel for the extra damage. Okay, and that's how you Turian soldier. <laughs> the equipment on this guy. Stick with your armor piercing rounds. Okay, guys, get the armor damage on the go there. Uh, the armor bonus go with the cyclonic, so you're tanky to make up for your stiffness. And uh, the gear bonus, I go with that, uh, yeah, so it's called the competitive's upgrade, okay? So that's the assault rifle and pistol damage, which is everything I'm rocking there, okay? And uh, But the eagle's my main gun, so it's the pistol rail amp that I go for for my weapons bonus. Okay, next up, the Battlefield 3 soldier, okay? Um... Back on to a sort of familiar, uh, vanilla setting, really, guys, but I, um, I play him differently. I've made this guy a power class, so I don't go with Adrenaline Rush on this guy, because unfortunately with Adrenaline Rush active, you can't use his powers. Uh, it would have been really nice uh, to get uh, the shield boost evolution of Adrenaline Rush, uh, just for that added survivability, because, you know, they're squishy as hell, and the Adrenaline Rush really does keep them alive, but um, what I'm going to be surviving off with this guy is just um, explosive explosions, just locking down and staggering the enemies, okay, doing a really good air of effect damage, okay, if you spec Carnage, for uh, damage, recharge speed, and armor damage, okay, and you spec frag grenades for damage, bleed damage, and armor piercing, okay, and uh, basically what you can do, you can just be this really makeshift um, power character, okay, if you um, use um, 
disrupt the rounds on your gun, okay? What you can do, you can set up a tech explosion by shooting the ca uh, an enemy with your gun. Then you can fire off with Carnage. Carnage is going to detonate a tech burst, okay? And then it's going to set up a fire explosion, because that's what Carnage has the potential to do, to detonate and prime. If I was to go with something like Inferno, uh, sorry, Incendiary rounds, okay, it would detonate the fire explosion, but then it would not set up another fire explosion, okay? You can't set up... Uh, another explosion that you just detonated and if you really want to string combos together they need to be different so that's why I'm going to recommend Disruptor or Cryo but Disruptor is going to be better because they're far more reliable at setting up explosions so you get basically you hit them with you set up the tech burst you detonate the tech burst and then you set up a fire explosion and then you can throw in the frag grenade and then detonate a fire explosion. And as you might have noticed as well, they're both spec for armor damage. So you really do well at uh, taking down the bosses quite efficiently with that little combination of um, explosions and um, armor damage bonuses. Okay, As a power class, your alliance training needs to be uh, damaging capacity and power damage. And then you can take the weapon damage to help with that uh, ad additional... Uh, no initial uh, priming there, okay, and fitness to really take all the health and shields you can get, guys, durability, shield recharge, and fitness expert. You are going to be squishy with this guy, but the fact is you're just going to be locking the enemy down with that really great area of effect damage, and um, to add to that, we're going to be taking the scorpion, okay? The scorpion uh, staggers enemies on contact, and then again, once the round explodes on them, so it's really good at um, just keeping the enemy in lockdown, okay? It doesn't pierce because it's a projectile weapon, because like I said, all explosive... Uh, Guns are like explosive like that are going to be projectiles, guys. It's standard, okay? So they're not going to pierce. Go with the heavy barrel there so you're doing the extra damage. And then go with the power magnifier so that all your hits are doing more damage as well as uh, getting those explosions on the go, okay, guys? So basically, you're just locking the enemy up with the scorpion and area of effect explosions, okay, guys? It's how you're going to survive. You're basically uh, making sure that there is no return fire because you can't take any return fire with this build, all right? Uh, for your armor bonus, okay? Your ammo bonus, Disruptor, as I made abundantly clear, that's what I recommend for this guy. And then for your armor bonus, I actually do recommend you go with the power amplifier, okay? So that uh, it's really, it's kill or be killed, as uh, I recommend for this guy. Uh, your gear bonus. If you really want to be um, getting off those that last fire explosion in your little chain efficiently, you're really going to need a lot of grenades. So take the uh, grenade capacity for the extra five grenades, okay? So you can throw out them frags. And of course, then you want a pistol rail amp for your scorpion. And that's the Battlefield 3 soldier. Right, uh, then we've got the Rotarian soldier. Okay, this is going. this is another power caster. Uh, soldier for you guys. Um, I'll show you the build. Ballistic blades. This is uh, wicked power. I uh, expect them for damage, range, and explosive blades. Okay. Uh, these, like the scorpion, are going to stagger on contact and then stagger again three seconds later when the blades explode. And uh, during that time, they're going to be doing bleed damage. Okay. This is your good, good initial strike. You just go in straight away with the ballistic blade. Just uh, lock the enemy down. Get that. Uh, get your first bit of dot in action. Okay. And you know they're going to stagger twice from that. Blade. I'm gonna put your three ranks into this, okay? That's gonna make your guy really tanky because you get a nice 25% damage reduction with just three ranks, okay? Because um, if you combine that with his fitness, you know, you go with the durability, shield recharge, and fitness expert, you've got 1,425 health and shields with that 25% uh, damage reduction. You, you know, very tanky character. But no, uh, this is where the damage starts piling up. You go with the Inferno Grenade. Same again, okay, guys, go with damage, damage, and armor damage, okay? And then basically, it's all about piling on the dot with this guy. So you just go in the Ballistic Blades, you're locking the enemy up, but you're getting the th bleed damage in the go, then the Inferno Grenades go in, okay? Uh, and then you start burning up the enemy and bleeding the enemy, okay? So you just, uh, you do, you just lock them, da you lock them up and melt them, okay? That's what you're doing with this guy. It's another power caster guy, so go with damaging capacity and power damage to make sure everything's doing great damage for you. And then uh, the icing on the cake is going to be the Growl Spike Thrower. Um, for shiggles, essentially, guys. It's all for the shiggles. Um, <laughs> the Growl's a good little uh, shotgun, okay? It does uh, reliably stagger every trooper-sized enemy with every shot, okay, guys? Uh, but it's also got a really tidy uh, three times uh, headshot damage uh, multiplier. <laughs> I think I might 
put those words in the wrong order, but yeah, really nice headshot multiplayer on this one. Uh, but you know, it staggers as well. And then you've got the whole theme going. Okay, we're going with spikes, blood, and fire with this uh, with this guy. Um, it doesn't t- pierce in the traditional sense, so just go with a high caliber barrel. Okay, guys, the only reason you're going to be able to get through like a guardian shield or a sort of armor plating with this is because the projectiles that come from this are actually quite large, and they do just protrude through those um, thin covers. Okay, that are, but uh, it doesn't pierce naturally. Uh, so yeah, just go with a high caliber barrel and the smart choke, okay? Because it's a very nice, accurate gun. So you know, getting the headshots in, and this is why it's really great with the ballistic blades, okay, guys? You just hit them with the ballistic blade. The enemy are staggered. You uh, throw in your grenades, they start burning and bleeding to death, and then you pump them with the growl spike uh, in the head, okay? That staggers them again. It probably wrecks them. They're dead by that point, to be honest. But you've got an, it's really easy to line up your shot and get some really nice damage out with the growl as well to keep the theme going because themes are fun. It's a role-playing game. Um, for the ammo bonus, okay, this is where I do actually recommend you be a bit cheeky and naughty and go with the incendiary rounds, okay, so that the incendiary rounds from your growl are just going to eat up your inferno grenades and just churn out all that uh, dot in about three seconds. Because you've got to remember, your blades explode in three seconds. So basically, we're going to be able to get all the dot out in three seconds and just decimate the enemy, okay? Absolutely decimate them with that combination. Uh, the armor bonus, go with the power amplifier, okay? So that, that, that you know, that dot is going to be massive. And then it, you, you are going to be throwing grenades all over the place, guys. You want to be getting... Uh, um, you can throw one grenade. For, uh, actually, don't throw any grenades if it's just like a single target. But as soon as you're dealing with a, uh, a group of enemies, uh, get two grenades in the mix, okay? If you're dealing with a boss, two grenades in the mix. If you're dealing with a boss with a group of enemies, three grenades in the mix, okay? So you will go through your grenades quite quickly, get the grenade capacity on there, okay? So you've got, you've got plenty of those on the go. And of course, you want your shotgun rail amp then. And that's how you, Batarian Soldier. Moving on, moving on. The Vorture Soldier now. Now, the Vorture Soldier is uh, essentially another power build. You can just get out some really easy damage with this guy. Really good, easy damage. Um... The Bloodlust ability is just going to allow you to just survive. <laughs> to be honest, really do some nice survive and go with uh, health regeneration. Power damage, okay, that's going to amp up your next ability, and then go with health regeneration. Uh, basically, with that, okay, with that alone, um, if you ever get near death, just slip uh, out of the line of uh, sight of the enemy for uh, just a moment, and you're going to get your health back super quick, okay? Um, yeah, because uh, with this looks jump into fitness now. Fitness is all uh, no, it's not actually. Go with durability. It's going to increase your, your health because uh, your shields aren't that important on a vulture. Okay, the health's really good, but the shields are just pathetic. But you don't need to worry about it because their health regenerates with the bloodlust ability. So you know, don't bother with shield recharge for the next one. Go with the martial artist. Okay, martial artist obviously is going to increase your melee damage every time you ki- um, you kill an enemy with your heavy melee. But basically, it's just a great way. To, uh, it's, it's a great excuse to start making use of the heavy melee because it's a good heavy melee. Okay, it lunges at the enemy, so it, it's a good uh, way of closing the gap on an enemy if you ever need to, although you rarely do. But uh, um, uh, most importantly, okay. There's some nice damage reduction frames in the heavy melee. So you know, if you want to, um, if you're surrounded by an enemy, but you're just about to finish, if you're surrounded by a group of enemies, okay, let me try and get this clear. And uh, there's just one enemy you're about to finish off. You can dive in with a heavy melee and kill him. So you're increasing your melee, uh, you're increasing your melee damage. You know, but then you're going to be surviving off your damage reduction frames. So the other enemies aren't really going to get you down because you've got you've got a nice tidy damage reduction, and then your uh, bloodlust is recharging your health as you're doing so. And then basically you can just turn around then you're probably at full health and with a stronger melee if you need to repeat the process and just take down all the other enemies it's going to do better for you than worrying about your shields with a vulture you're probably going to be playing most of the game in your health bars okay you'd probably your shields are probably you're probably gonna have that blood screen for the duration of the game but it's okay okay it's absolutely okay to be like that but then take fitness expert at the end then so you've got all that health so you've got 1313 health that regenerates super quick as long as you're killing and it's very easy to kill with this guy because of the flamer okay flamer is amazing um like i said he can't take he can't take a lot of uh, brunt damage he's not a tank he's just got great survivability because he can just slip out of the danger for just a moment and he's back at full health okay uh for that reason you don't need to get stuck in go with the reach um 
evolution so they've got a 50 meter range okay that's massive that's huge so you can just burn enemies for miles okay and then you just go with the damage and the armor damage okay and then you're just going to do a lot of damage okay you just do a lot of quick damage with this guy uh, especially if you back it up with uh, damaging capacity and power damage in your Vulture of Resilience, and then obviously just take the weapon damage. And this is uh, this the reason this is all going to work so uh, smoothly, okay? Is because the weapon I'm going to be using is the Acolyte. Um, with the Acolyte, uh, just go with the heavy barrel and get that power magnifier on there, okay? Uh, the Acolyte's just got an in insane 500 uh, percent damage multiplier to shields and barriers so uh, you know in an instant the enemy lose their shields and uh, then you just hit them with the flamer and they'll panic and die <laughs> and then and that's it okay so there's no a lot of return fire and if you ever do you just slip out get your health back come back do it again okay and uh, why this is going to work even better still is if in your equipment you go with the cryo rounds okay slap your cryo rounds on there and that's basically going to freeze up enemies so there's definitely no return fire because as soon as their shields are off they freeze to death okay they will freeze solid and you just melt them and with the bosses then you're going to significantly weaken armor by uh, with the right so with your cry rounds four it's by 65 percent okay so then that armor of that bonus damage that you got in your flamer as well it means you just take out everything super quick super smooth as well okay guys um go with a power amplifier for your armor bonus uh take an <sighs> Go with an engineering kit. Um, where is it? I think I passed it. <laughs> yeah. Engineering kit for your um, gear bonus. And then just take a pistol rail lamp for your weapon bonus. And that's him. Okay, smooth, easy damage there. Okay, guys. Uh, then the N7 Destroyer. Yes, everyone loves the N7 Destroyer. <laughs> the most accessible uh, weapons platform in the game for sure. Uh, this is how I build him, okay guys, I like to go with a nice ramp up weapon and really just hold uh, hold my ground and uh, and just win those uh, those sort of long firefights uh, really efficiently, okay. With uh, Devastator mode I go with the shield recharge delay, okay, it's a stiff character so it's nice that I got, um, so I got something really supporting his uh, health because he does have some nice shields, this guy. Uh, I really don't need the weapon accuracy of the weapons I'm going to be using on him, okay? Because uh, one's pinpoint accurate and the other one homes in on enemies, okay? So that's the point of this evolution for me. I'm just going with shield recharge delay so that I get my shields back nice and quick. Then the next one I'm going for is the magazine size, okay? Uh, I, the rate of fire would be slightly counterproductive for me, okay? Because uh, this is a build that's really for long firefights, okay? So I can really just kind of hold my down, uh, ground with a big magazine on my gun and just burn away the enemy okay it's a really it's a it's a really cool feature that he has he gets the most uh he gets the largest increase to anybody's uh, clip sizes in this gun so that's why i like to have fun with and then i take the damage bonus so i'm doing the damage there i don't care for the hawk missile launchers good for staggering but i prefer to be more hands-on with the multi-frag grenades okay spec them for force and damage force and damage and then go with the grenade count okay so then you're firing five grenades at a time okay you're going to always do more damage with five grenades than you are with three powerful grenades okay you could do the math if you don't believe me <laughs> uh the battle suit here is going to just back up everything i'm doing with devastator mode okay weapon damage headshots and weapon damage and then like i said with these internal systems if you just expect for full health and shields go with the durability shield recharge fitness experts you've got 1650 shields really tidy and devastator mode is going to have them recharge it nice and quick for me okay so, um, you know, he's really slow uh, and stiff, this character. He's got no evasive abilities, and he is slower with Devastator mode on. Uh, so, you know, it's just great that I've got that kind of tankiness, and um, I can hold down a real good firefight. And I'm going to do that with the particle rifle, okay? Um, with all your ramp-up weapons, you absolutely want a magazine upgrade, okay? I think I said that already with the striker. I'm saying it again for the particle rifle. Get the magazine upgrade on there. Uh, the, mag uh, the particle rifle essentially is just a big SMG, okay? It just... Um, the the individual points of the laser that comes out, okay, uh, they do very little damage, but they stream out so quickly uh, that that you know that it adds up. But if you know if you don't go with something like the high velocity barrel, then for your next mod, you're really going to lose a ton of damage when you're dealing with armor targets. So you absolutely want to be ignoring as much armor as you can. Uh, but essentially, this you know it's a pinpoint accurate gun as well. Okay, so that's why I didn't need the weapon accuracy uh, again. And uh, as a weapon, a ramp up weapon. Okay, I just get to um, 
hold my ground um, with the gun fully ramped up for much longer with the magazine upgrade. Okay, so you know it's all good stuff there. You know, the Devastator mode is basically built around the particle rifle, but uh, for the main part, I will actually be using the Geth Plasma shotgun on this guy, okay? It's, um, this one doesn't do any piercing, okay? It's a projectile weapon, so just take the spare thermal clip and the high-caliber barrel for this thing. But uh, with the Devastator mode, I am firing quicker, even without uh, specking into it, so I am able to just pop shots off my hip with this thing really quickly, and, you know, it staggers every trooper-sized enemy with every hit, so it's just great for dealing with all the trash mobs and then as soon as a boss comes out that's when the particle rifle is and I stand my ground and I just burn them away okay uh, for the equipment uh, I like well the because the particle rifle has insane rate of fire and accuracy okay uh, incendiary rounds are just awesome on it okay they just really do work amazing you'll apply your uh, ammo bonuses really quickly with the particle rifle so I do recommend incendiary rounds and plus uh, in when I'm dealing with a lot of enemies I'm just sort of uh, take uh, just drilling them all with a particle rifle what I can do is uh, as soon as the particle rifle needs to start recharging I can just fire off two lots of uh, multi-frag grenades set off a bunch of fire explosions and in that time my particle rifles all charged up and ready to go again and I can just repeat that process. Okay, there's another good reason to have incendiary rounds on. Uh, for the armor bonus, take the uh, cyclonic modulator to deal with the stiffness, give you tanky. Uh, for the gear bonus, um, well, as you might have noticed, I'm quite short on uh, my shotgun rail lamps okay so what i'm actually going to uh, would recommend in this instance is going with the warfighter package okay so i got the uh, assault rifle increase and then i got the two extra grenades um if i had more shotguns i would go with the uh shock trooper uh, upgrade okay so i've got the shotgun increase and the uh, max grenades and then my uh weapon bonus is going to be the alternative okay so uh, if i said if i go for the uh war fighter i'll take a shotgun rail lamp but if, if i'm going to go with the shock trooper i'll take the assault rifle rail lamp Okay. Uh, right. I think that was clear. I might have mixed that up <laughs> upon reflection, but you you get what I'm saying. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, okay. The Turian Havoc went to Retaliation DLC characters now. Now I do love to have fun with Havoc Strike on this guy. Make it give him some uh, originality. You know, give him give him his own. Uh, reason for being uh, charging with this it's like a biotic charge power okay go with force and damage this is going to be very important with your, in combination with his passes if you want to have any chance of staggering a phantom okay you need over a thousand newtons force to do that uh, then I go with the weapon synergy so after every charge I got extra damage and then it, I take incendiary strike this one's uh, I'd say is fundamental it's like having radius on your biotic charge so that when you charge in you don't just knock back the enemy you attacked you knock back any enemies that's surrounding you then okay Okay, so you don't just charge and then find yourself surrounded. You just knock all those enemies back then and you just uh, take them out quick then with the weapon synergy that you've got in play there. Uh, essentially, Havoc Strike is going to be about closing the gap. Okay, As soon as you... Literally, if there's enemies on the map, I'm going to Havoc Strike into them. Okay, And from that point on, it's going to be working Cryo Blast. Cryo Blast is an amazing debuffer. I recommend that you go with Radius, Cryo Explosion, and Frozen Vulnerability. Those last two evolutions is really where you start... Um, just weakening the enemy really nicely for it just so and with the uh, and once you've charged in okay I've got the weapon synergy in play then I'm going to weaken the enemy with the cryo blast and then I'm just going to destroy them radius on it is obviously going to allow me to hit more than one target too so it's really good so if I charge into that group I uh, debuff the group as well and then um, you know if I'm if I take any nasty fire in that situation because Havoc Strike doesn't give you shields back like uh, biotic charges I've got the stim pack okay uh, I can just eat a stim pack to get my shields um, I do recommend that you still just get the extra damage increases, okay, so go damage for rank 4 and then duration, so that damage lasts for a while uh, with it, because, you know, by default you get 1,200 shields every time you eat one, that's all you're going to need, alright so just um, charge in and cryoblast and shoot, okay guys and if you're ever losing your shields, stim pack find yourself another group of enemies, you have a strike in and you read some repeat, okay guys um Right, now for your passives, you want to go with the damage and stability, obviously, so you can do some more weapon damage again. But then you want that power damage, okay, so you can increase the damage and force of all your power so you can get that 1,000 Newton, so you can so you can actually charge into phantoms without just handing her over your life, okay? And I, but I do recommend you um, go for fi uh, durability as well, okay, because you are just jumping into groups of enemies without shields, okay? Um, well, without instant shields, so it's good to just be durable, get that 1,000 
150 shields on this character. And that's it, guys. You're just closing the gap with Havoc Strike, and then you're just going around cryoblasting and shooting enemies to death. Um, and, you know, in a pinch, you just take a stimulant pack to keep yourself going. Uh, I'm going to be sticking... Well, I always stick on the Riga Carbine on this guy, okay? Because the Riga Carbine is arguably the best um, up-close and personal weapon. If you're going to be in the face of enemies, the Riga is definitely the gun for the job. Um, I don't want it too heavy so that I can have it strike and cryoblast efficiently, okay? So I'm just going to go with a traditional shredder mod and high-caliber barrel, okay? Because it is a DLC weapon, so it will get heavier if I slap the high-velocity barrel on that thing. So that's all that will do me. Um... For the equipment, I'm going to go ahead and use incendiary rounds still. Okay, I'm going to go with the incendiary rounds. And uh, basically, you know, just so you just... Because it's like the particle rifle, okay? In, uh, it just spits death. So you're just going to really apply any ammo bonuses super quickly. But most importantly then, you set up fire explosions so that your Havoc Strike can detonate. So it does really uh, gel quite nicely there. Your armor bonus get on the cyclonic modulator. Okay, so you can really tank it out there because you are going right and deep with the enemy. And then for your gear bonus, go with the shock trooper package. Okay, guys? Because then you've got the extra uh, stimulant packs and you've got shotgun damage. Okay, you've got everything you need there. And for your weapon bonus, shotgun ray lamp, obviously. And that's my way of playing the Havoc. Because I think it's important to have Havoc strike on him, because, you know, that that's who he is. You know, he's the, he's the, he's the Havoc soldier. But let's, uh, let's take a look at the Geth Trooper here, moving on. This is basically a tanky flamer character, okay? And he is a beast. Uh, um, he really is just a beast. Um, for flamer, you can afford to just really get stuck in, okay? You can just go with damage, damage, and armor damage, okay? You've still got a nice 10 meter range on your flamer, okay? Without specking for the extra reach there. So uh, you don't have to get in too close, but, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, being... Uh, close at all because this guy has got some incredible survivability. You've got fortification here. If you spec this for durability, take the power synergy because that's going to make your flamer even beastier. And then you take some more durability. Now you've got a 40% damage reduction. And then with his advanced hardware, if you just go with durability, shield recharge, and fitness expert, you've got a colossal 1650 shields with a 40% damage reduction. And that's why you can just evolve, uh, get stuck in with this guy. Okay, you really can. Uh, for the network AI, okay, um, I'm going to go with uh, weapon damage, power damage and weapon damage because I'm going to mix things up with this guy uh, with the particle rifle. Sticking the particle rifle on with the same mods again, okay, go with the magazine upgrade and the high velocity barrel for the same reasons I mentioned earlier. And you can essentially just afford to stand out there, stand your ground and just stream out damage, okay? You can uh, you can just uh, empty uh, uh, the particle rifle into the enemy. Before that clip runs out, you switch to the flamer, burn up the enemy and then as soon as flame is up, your particle rifle's ready to go again and you just start streaming out your particle rifle damage, okay? And that's what you can do with this character. The particle rifle is also going to be really, with its rate of fire, is just going to just rip shields and barriers off and then the flamer is just going to decimate armor because of, the, because of its evolution there um, with the equipment bonus again let's uh, be naughty stick on the incendiary rounds okay and then the incendiary rounds are just going to eat up your flamer damage as well okay and you're just going to churn out a lot of damage really quickly uh, for the armor bonus tank it guys go with a high cyclonic modulator okay and then you're going to be just beastly out there um, for his gear bonus, go with, let me find it, uh, yeah, the Omni Capacitors, okay, this increases your tech damage and your power recharge speed, okay, because, um, the particle rifle came out like a promotional weapon, but it's actually part of the Rebellion DLC pack, okay, so it is a DLC weapon, and it does get heavier with that high velocity barrel on there, so it's good that you're able to get that extra power recharge speed then, so you can really get your flamer going, and obviously you want an assault rifle rail lamp then to uh, polish everything off. And that's the Geth Trooper, or at least mine. <laughs> now the Quarian Marksman, this is the last Retaliation Soldier. Because yes, we did get three. Um, yeah, um, 
He's got Marksman. It's another great excuse to play with Marksman, but I'm always going to prefer the uh, Turian. Marksman, you want to build exactly the same. Okay, guys, just go for firing rate, uh, headshots, and accuracy and firing rate for all the good reasons I said before. Tactical scan is going to basically be your replacement for proximity mine. Go with uh, weapon damage. Unfortunately, that headshot evolution does not work on tactical scan, so just go with the movement speed. That will help you out, slowing down the enemy, and then go for the damage evolution at the end. So you've got a really nice debuff there. It's a really really good debuff it uh, but it affects one target so you'll just be using it on the bosses again and um, don't bother with sabotage I don't even know why it's on him <laughs> to be perfectly honest uh, quarry and defender all weapon bonuses guys go with weapon damage headshots weapon damage and then fitness all health and shields okay durability shield recharge fitness expert okay he has really crappy health and shields only 875 so he's a really squishy character and as you might have noticed he doesn't have any stability bonuses so what you're going to encounter when you're using marksman is a lot of kick uh, from even guns that you might have not realized had kick okay because you know even if there's, a, if there's a subtle kick with a weapon if you're firing that weapon so much faster it's going to add up okay and then you, your gun's just going to start bouncing all over the place which is why he's so much less efficient than the Turian soldier but I also like to just sort of play on the fact that he's kind of squishy I say you can, even with all that kick you can outgun uh, an enemy before they gun you but uh, it's just a, it gives you an excuse to do something a little different with marksman I go with the Indra on him, okay? Um, you can't increase the clip size with your sniper rifles. You're going to get clear your spare ammo, but you still want it, okay? Because Marksman's just going to burn through your clip. So take the spare thermal clip mod and then take the uh, high velocity barrel, okay, for the damage and piercing. And uh, basically, you can play a longer range game then, okay? I don't need to get stuck in. I can snipe and just stream out a bunch of damage, okay? Um, if anything gets too close, I've got the Talon. Okay, the Talon's amazing with Marksman as well because you can just pop this thing off super quick. Again, you want your magazine upgrade with Marksman and then I go with a heavy barrel so I can do some extra damage with it. And because, you know, the uh, Talon's got a 150% damage multiplier to shields and barriers, so it's normally the mooks that's going to really get in close to you because you're going to have to just... Uh, mow down the big bosses because you can't miss them but anything that slips in close to you maybe like a Geth Hunter or something like that you can just whip out the Talon pop them away because you're going to strip their shields and as soon as that resistance comes off that will stun the enemy then okay so it's a really good way of uh, just getting some control of that situation if any enemy catches you off by surprise there uh, the equipment for him, okay, get the uh, armor piercing back on okay so you're just doing some nice armor damage with his uh, marksman uh, for his armor bonus um Again, because now the way I've got him, uh, the way I'm playing him with the sniper rifle and stuff, I don't need to worry about my health being so squishy. I can play the long range game and uh, get the stabili uh, stabilization module on there, okay? Really control the kick that I'm going to get with Marksman. And um, for his gear bonus. Just go with the sniper rifle. Uh, I was thinking of going with the barrage. Uh, what you could potentially, if you are worried about being squishy, you can go with the cyclonic modulation and use the barrage uh, upgrade there. So you got the you get a, you get some more spare ammo again, but then you got some stability. But um, I'm not. I use the stabilization module and I just go with the sniper rifle uh, amp. Okay the extra damage there and obviously I, the sniper the Indra is going to be my main gun so I just go with the sniper rifle rail lamp as well okay and that's my Aquarian marksman for some long range marksman work long range more agile <laughs> okay that's uh, that's the spin I put on it and then finally we'll be looking at the Geth Juggernaut the last soldier we got okay um, this big hunking bastard okay <laughs> The hex shield is a pain in the ass, to be honest, guys. It's um, it's it's not good at what it does, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, it just gets in people's way. It's annoying. I, I really highly recommend that you spec out of it to just go with the siege pulse. And with siege pulse, go with damage, recharge speed, and resistance damage. Okay, do damage with your siege pulse. You do not need to be specking for damage reduction on this guy okay because he is a colossal tank just start really hitting hard with the powers that you're going to be using same for the geth turret okay go with shields and damage armor damage and flame thrower okay so i mean the, the, this little turret is going to give you shields anyway you're still going to get that benefit but you know you've got so much shields you don't need to worry about them coming back so frequently just try and get as much damage done as you can so you're not just this a big idiot in the background okay guys really put the work out 
and get it done, okay? Uh, for his uh, passives, Geth Juggernaut, go with the weapon damage, power damage, and weapon damage, okay? So this is how it's all going to work. You're just going to get, uh, you're going to be able to do a lot of weapon damage and a lot of power damage. And now with a hardened platform, now go with your health and shields, okay guys? Durability, shield recharge, and power transfer. Yes, you lose a bit of damage, okay? You lose 15% of your damage, but you are getting colossal health and shields. And uh, you're also getting more health when you do the heavy melee. Heavy melee is really good in a pinch to survive a bad situation. But it's also good for just grabbing those really nippy enemies like the phantoms and the nemesis, okay? You can just t pick them up, rip off their shields, and then blow them up, all right guys? But look, 2,300 health... 4,600 shields at this build, okay, guys? If you need any more survivability, you're doing it wrong, okay? <laughs> you're doing the game wrong. You don't need any more. Just start doing some real nice damage with your juggernauts, all right? Uh, the weapon I stick on him is going to be the Lancer uh, for multiple reasons. One, probably the most important, is the fact that it's a recharging gun, so I don't have to worry about hitting the ammo boxes. This guy is a slow piece of shit because he can only walk, okay, guys? So you really don't want to have to worry about having to hit all those ammo boxes because that's just going to put you out of commission for a long time. If you're a gun that's just going to recharge his clip, it's just one thing less thing to worry about. Of course, as a, with those recharging clips, you want your magazine upgrade, but then I also recommend that you take the piercing mod as well, because the uh, um, the juggernaut's got nothing else that's really going to help him get round any kind of... Um, you know, any objects is blocking his way. But uh, what's also great about this gun is the fact that it's got a really tidy rate of fire and, a, and uh, with some really nice damage as well, okay? So, uh, and... That's what you can do, guys. You can just do, um, you can just, uh, set up, uh, explosions really quickly while damaging the enemy, uh, efficiently at the same time. Because, uh, this is why, uh, Siege Pulse is really going to work for him, too. Because for his equipment, if you go back to incendiary rounds now, okay, and you just start gunning the enemy with, uh, with the Lancer, uh, you start setting them on fire really quick, uh, you're doing a lot of damage to them at the same time, okay, and then you hit them with the Siege Pulse fire explosion. If you're dealing with a large group of enemies or a big boss, you throw in the Geth turret as well into the mix. Uh, that's just going to add in some extra firepower quite in a literal sense as well you're going to have a flamethrower coming out and setting up more fire explosions that your siege pods can detonate as well so you're just doing some really nice damage with your juggernaut you absolutely want an adrenaline module on this guy okay? You do, like I said you don't need any more health and shields guys don't kid yourselves you're going to be fine just make sure you can get around the map and do some damage more efficiently with an adrenaline module uh, for his gear bonus um go with the omni capacitors again okay guys omni capacitors so you can just get the siege pulses uh, flying out as efficiently as you need them and doing some more damage and then I'll go over the assault rifle rail lamp then so you've got the extra weapon damage and that my friends is how i play all my soldiers um give them a try if you haven't already check out the videos if you haven't already i will be back in the next video with my engineers take care of yourselves i will see you then guys